match. Like, because I think there's a lot less decision making with some decisions. Well, yeah, and, yeah, and tennis. I mean, that's one of the only sports I ever actually like yeah, did good. and stuff. And deciding you're going to play the ball short, you're going to play it long, you're going to yeah. try to cross the court, pull your other, pull the opponent yeah. out of position. You know, if if you get them out of position, do you do you keep them on that side and then switch it up, or do you switch yeah. the other side and get them scrambling and hope they'll fall down? So, so um, yeah. So to go back to, uh, I'll go back to what we were looking at. Where did I put it? that little game thoughts thing in? So this is what we had: an objective, rules, engagement, competitors. So obviously the, the big point of the article is what, what were we missing? The decision making. And, and that's the piece. And I think that's, I think once, once you're aware of it, it's kind of obvious. But it's one of the things you don't, it's hard to get to that point just by kind of thinking about games because you're not really thinking along those lines. So, you know, he's basically saying, I forget exactly word for word, but, you know, the, 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 um, Meaningful decisions. Uh, he had the rules. He had um, the competitors. That it is, you know, that there is a, a you know, uh, people or, or agents involved. Um, but it really is about that that decision making. So by that, and, that sorry, go ahead. No, so by that definition, Kahoot really isn't a game because once once you get that going up, there's no decision making. That's gamification. Yeah, that would be it. Yeah, and it's that's really more of a contest, or yeah, because it's there is a right answer, and you either get the right answer or you don't get the right answer, and you Except don't even get the game. So, you do with us to get right answers, just to get well, yeah, that's in that case that that's much more like a gamification thing, like using elements of gaming. That there's the engagement, there's right. kind of a competition because you're looking to see the results and so on. Um, so yeah, that would be. You know, you're getting elements there. So here is here is what I would like to propose for us moving forward is um, is this following definition, which is mostly what he said, but I included um, one additional piece into it. So a system of rules. So the actual game is the system of rules. So that gets away with us not needing to necessarily have, it doesn't have to have a board or have to have cards or have to have playing pieces or anything. The rules that you establish, the, the guidelines that guide the game are essentially the game. And the rest of it is just the expression of the game. Um, in which agents compete. And as he pointed out, like with the solitaire example at the end, agents, one of the agents can actually be the, the rules of the game. So a person is playing against the deck or playing against the rules of the game, but there's still a competition there because either the rules of the game or the cards win the game or the player playing wins the game. So there's still a competition there. Then here's our meaningful, ambiguous decision. So... You know, he said meaningful doesn't mean, what's the example I said? Like, it's not that it reminds you of your father or whatever. Like, that, that kind of meaningful. Meaning that that they making the decision actually can affect something significant right. in the way the game plays out. And this is the, the big thing, the big difference between this and puzzles is that in a puzzle you're making decisions. You know, do I answer this put a thing in this box now or do I do it in this box? So you are making decisions, but in the end, those decisions really aren't meaningful because they all end in the same place. You either solve the puzzle with the correct answer or you or you don't. So I, his, his point there is that those aren't meaningful decisions. They can't affect the outcome. There is one outcome to a puzzle and that is the solution. So this has to. This also implies that there are multiple possible outcomes, and the ambiguous decisions is sort of along that same lines. Just means that you don't know at the time if it's the right decision or not. And even further, if you made the same decision in two different playings of the games, one of the times that decision might have been the right one for that game, but if you made the exact same decision in another game, it might have been the wrong one or led to a completely different outcome. So both of those, I think, help to separate puzzles and um, contests 
from uh, from games. You know, a contest is just a measurement of skill. How fast can you do this? How long can you do this? That's what um, when people always tell me I should play Guitar Hero. I've never actually played Guitar Hero, but that's not really a, a game. You're not making any decisions. It's just a measurement of how fast can you push the right button that's on the screen at the right time and get points for how you know how fast you can go. Um, so that's basically his his definition. I added, and you guys actually, this was one of the first things you came up with, to reach a defined end game. Um, and I, maybe he just felt that that was sort of implied in the idea of competition, but I feel like it's important to establish what the goal is um, in terms of the game, and that's obviously also embedded in the system of rules, but. If you just have something where people are making decisions, and I guess that would be sort of along his simulation line. Like, if you play SimCity, my daughter spends countless hours playing SimCity. There's no end game. It, it's just she's constantly, I mean, she's making ambiguous decisions, whether to spend money on buying this house now or to whatever, change this character's look. Um, and there's a system of rules you're playing within the context of it. There's not really competition, I guess. But there is no end game. So SimCity is a simulation. It's it's trying to be a representation of something else, but there's no point in SimCity where you're like, that's it, I won, or I didn't win. It just keeps going forever, which is maybe why she's played so many hours of it. So when you brought up the point about it should increase in difficulty as it progresses, is that a... I think his that was that was one of the places where I think he was getting a little bit specifically into a his response game. to video okay. games because okay. that's kind of become the the trend in video games. You know, if if your Layers. knowledge and experience of yeah. of video games is largely like mine, which goes back to the old video arcades where you were playing Space Invaders and Pac Man and stuff like that, um, the majority of video games today have really become like these whole interactive right. environments and. And so I think what he's saying is that um, that if you have a game where the skill of the player agent can just keep increasing, increasing, and increasing, then that kind of defeats the whole purpose of the decisions. Because then I think he said then it becomes a matter just of how fast you beat the game. Okay. That that if my player can just keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger, then at a certain point, I just play until the point where my character is unbeatable. And unless the game is trying to rewrite itself and try to match the level of the player, then you do kind of reach a point where it doesn't matter what decision I make. If I just keep going and keep gaining hit points or experience points or whatever they are, that you get to a point where like, it's just, do I finish this? You know, Do I beat this game in 15 minutes or do I beat the game in a half an hour? Yeah. Sort of thing. So, like so. chess would be a game. Absolutely. Yeah, because it's running it, every decision you make. Right. So it's there's definitely a system of rules. Tell my sister that. Um, you've got agents competing, white and black. The meaningful, ambiguous decisions. Yeah. At any given point. Now we're going to talk next time. We're going to talk about a couple, and he they they cropped up in brief passing in the article. But there's a there's a couple of ways to classify games. And one of them is about um, how much information about the state of the game the player has at any given moment. So in this case, it's informationally complete or perfect. Because at any given moment, both players know the position of every piece in the game. There's no, there's no hidden things. There's nothing like, oh, I wonder what he's got. So in that case, the, the decisions, you're working from a standpoint of you know the entire state of the game. But even within that context, and this is probably why chess is so successful, is you still don't know whether making this particular decision at this point is going to lead to a better outcome for you than another one. And again, you could make the same move. When I used to play my dad, I would usually start off with the same series of three or four moves because they were just my favorite opening. Sometimes I'd win using that, and sometimes it would put me in the hole right away because, you know. So, so like war... The card game war wouldn't be a game because I don't think there's no. any point in him making decisions. That is correct. That's a that's really a contest of randomness. And same thing with shoots and ladders because I don't think in shoots and ladders you ever get to make a 
No, you're rolling a dice and then you're going outside. But my checkers right. would be a game. Right? Yes. A rum, a rum Cause cause game. game. Yeah, because you choose, do I want to move right. this piece forward? Do right. I want to jump this piece? So do I want to... Um, yeah, and then the defined end game. I mean, the chess in chess, if you win when you checkmate your your opponent, so that's absolutely absolutely a game. So, so a lot of this is just. I mean, you guys are going to become game designers. That's sort of the point of this course, or one of the main points of this course. So, obviously, it's important to kind of know what we're aiming for. We've got to tick off all of these boxes. So. Um, I will tell you right now that it is that middle one, that meaningful, ambiguous decisions, that you're probably going to spend the most time trying to figure out and really make sure are happening, especially in an educational standpoint, because a lot of times we're trying to get them to a right answer. And if there is a right answer, then it's a puzzle, not a game. So that's going to be something to consider and something to keep in mind. I mean, I think system of rules, we kind of all understand that, and the agents competing and having a finish to it, but some, that, that middle one can oftentimes so be the... So what about like the game Jeopardy on TV? So the, the game, yeah, because they, I mean, they've got the set of rules, there's agents competing. The ambiguous decisions would be a what, which box do I want to choose? And then how much, okay. you know, because there's, yeah, you have to decide. Some people go for the Looking high dollar sports. ones first right. and try to clear that row out. Other people start with the low dollar ones. And then you have the um, double jeopardy and the final Double jeopardies jeopardy. yeah. when, you, when you have to decide how much money you're going to wager. Yeah, so when we do it in a classroom setting, we take away those pieces, like, because it makes it complicated. It's no longer a game. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to examine like exactly not, what what you're doing. Yeah. At that point, it becomes a I don't know what you, you call it an exercise or an right. activity. So but in terms of the actual, right. if we were to truly say right. we are still doing the Jeopardy game, okay. Um, okay. And and I think he made a bit, he makes a good point in brief passing somewhere along the way, something along the lines of saying something's not a game. That's not a judgment call. We're not no. saying that because it's not a game, it's not useful, it's not effective, it's not, it can't be beneficial. I mean, obviously, contests of, of skill and strength and all of that are very exciting and, and meaningful in their own way and everything. He's just saying, if you are truly interested in creating something, a game, then here is a prescriptive way, thing you can hold up and say, is this actually a game? So sports like gymnastics or cheerleading would not be... Those are contests because they're not really making. I mean, you you could say somebody on the in the moment is making decisions about exactly how to try to push off of the ground, but that's really more of a yeah. a contest of skill um, and strength and agility and and so on. But you know, within a floor routine, I mean, a, a, a gymnast learns a floor routine. Yeah, and really, their goal it. is to try to execute that floor routine as perfectly as possible each time they do it. They're not really making meaningful decisions within that. I mean, beyond waiting an extra half second before they start a pass. Yeah. But um, yeah, that would I think he would consider that a contest. That would fall okay. under contests. So, all right. So, other any other. <coughs> Thoughts about this? Does this seem like a useful tool to, to move forward with? All right. So the next thing I'd like to do, and, I, and I'm glad we got all eight here tonight because it'll work out really, really well, is because we are going to be doing instructional games, educational games, um, if this is our framework, we've got kind of the four things, system of rules, agents competing, ambiguous decisions, and an end game. And what I'd like to do is to is to split up and have like a little little paired off discussions um, about what sort of impact trying to achieve each of these things would have to an educational goal, or what challenges do you see? in trying to achieve any of these four things that might run counter to something that you might have been taught about the way a classroom should run or the way that things should be taught. 
Um, so just to kind of examine it and say, okay, well, if I was just told to go out and make a game and I didn't have to worry about teaching anybody anything, I could just follow this and I'd be good. But I, I think there are some elements in each of these four where if you're not careful in the way you construct your game, you might be working against good educational goals or strategies. So, um, so I figure with, with eight of you and four of these that we can work in pairs, and each pair will take one of these four, and just have a little discussion about, you know, if, if we're going to achieve this in an educational setting, what do we have to think about? What, how, how is the fact that we're trying to teach something at the same time that we're trying to make a game? How, do, how are these two things going to mesh together? Or do we see any potential pitfalls in, in trying to mesh the two things together? And then we'll come back together and kind of share out from each group what they came up with um, and uh, kind of figure all of that out. So is that, is that clear enough? Yeah, right? OK. So um, I, I'm not going to count you guys off or something. I figure between the eight of you, you can figure out how to group yourselves into four groups of two. Yes? Okay, there's a group. There's a group. There's a group. And I guess you've got Yolanda. All right, so we'll just go around the room. So why don't, why don't you guys take the system of rules, you guys take the competing agents, you guys take the ambiguous decisions, and you guys take the end game. All right, so again, just think about if I'm going to do this in an educational setting, what might this look like? Or... In trying to achieve this, what can I maybe anticipate as being a possible issue that might come up? If I've got to define an end game to something, how can I do that in a way that's instructionally appropriate to 